22 years old and in just his sixth year of fighting and he gives away 12 years to Weaver but gets back two inches in height he gives away eight inches uh, or eight pounds rather in weight and you see of course the record now let's go up to the ring and our announcer Denny McGuire the night of the heavyweights from the Cumberland County Memorial Arena our judges tonight Georgie Colon, Harold Letterman, and George DeGabriel. The referee, Luis Rivera. Let's get to the principles of our first 10 round heavyweight fight. In the red corner, with a record of 12 wins, one loss and one tie, he weighed in at 215 and three quarter pounds from Toronto, Canada, Razor Ruddick. In the blue corner, with a record of 28, 12, and 1, 19 KOs, he weighed in at 223 and 3 quarter pounds from Los Angeles, California, the former WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Weaver! Weaver! sense Alexis by the way the crowd responded to Ruddick that they don't quite know what to expect from the young man who is virtually unknown let's go back to the ring Heavy punches no killing punches no low punches I want a clean fight protect yourself at all times the three knockdown rule is on any knockdown go to the further neutral corner and I stay there until I tell you to come out listen to my commands any question check hand with the bell sound of my fighter good luck so we fairly well set the scene for you. As I mentioned, our referee is uh, Luis Rivera, who is working uh, every fight on this card tonight and doing an excellent job at that. And we're about set here to pull the trigger, and so sit back and relax. Pour yourself a bud and enjoy two hours of what we hope will not only be exciting but very entertaining boxing from Fayetteville, North Carolina. That what we were all expecting, that uh, it would be a good fight because Razor is getting a great chance, great opportunity. Uh, I know it won't be easy because... Uh, we were stopped with a strong guy, with a well-built fighter. But let's see what was the involvement of the fight. Well, I think you said it all when you said that Ruddick has everything to gain and nothing to lose here, going against the former WBA uh, heavyweight champion. And you almost don't quite know what to expect from Weaver each time out. He is uh, he masquerades as a fighter sometimes, and other times he comes out as a... I think it's fair to say a fairly good stiff, and uh, Michael has had some ups and downs in this career of his, and he's a very talented uh, boxer. And looking to reassert himself, coming off a first-round knockout at the hands of James Bone Crusher Smith, who you, you will see later in this fight card. A good advantage, Sam, is that Weaver had four longer than, than, than Razor. But I hope he can conquer uh, the his experience. He can, he can use the experience. I mean, you know, let's see if a Razor is able to put together his uh, boxing skills. Because I believe he has a good boxer. Well, they say that styles make the match, and if that's the case, we're in for a, an excellent fight. Uh, Ruddick does not consider himself a knockout puncher, although he has seven knockouts in his 12 victories. But he has what his handlers and manager George Chivalo, the former heavyweight contender, described as the best left jab in the heavyweight division, and that would include the former champ Larry Holmes himself. Weaver, on the other hand, has great knockout ability as evidenced by his 19 KOs in 28 victories, and he is notoriously famous for his left hook. He is equally notoriously famous for a very slow start, and I think it would be in Razor Ruddick's best interest, uh, Alexis, to get off to a good start here because he could jump right on Weaver. Well, he should have started from the beginning uh, a little more busy. He should have been more busy, but now he's taking his space. I think what he's trying to do is try to get his... Weaver's style first to go forward after the first round. This is round number one. We are scheduled for 10. We will stay here uh, between uh, the first and second rounds and go back to the respective corners of the two fighters under a minute to go in the first round, which has been pretty much a feeding out process by both fighters. Again, Ruddick in the gold trunks with the red waistband and Mike Weaver in the all-purple trunks. Two good left jabs by Ruddick that did no damage, but he showed where he obviously has some talent with the left hand. 
Well, I want to see the jab. Everybody talk about that Roddy has a fast jab. I haven't seen him. We need to use a little more in order to to confuse Weaver. We want to. We want to do it. Ten seconds to go in the first round. A rather uneventful uh, affair, to say the least. And so we will stay here, as I mentioned, for our local stations and go back to the respective rounds and see what their handlers have to say. We'll start with Mike Weaver. Well, we're back with Razor Ruddick now. Either it's a very silent corner or our microphone isn't working. <laughs> Not much being said over there, so let's get out of there and go over to Weaver's side. <laughs> Double J. Double J. Just that. And uh, they look like pro. Pro corner, you know, and Jumalo is an ex champion. Closing up the distance. Okay. Out of Double J. That's the warning whistle. Speaking of warning, Ruddick was given one as he held and hit Weaver there in round number one. Here we go now. We are back live and we go to round number two. Again, it's Ruddick in the gold trunks with a red waistband. Mike Weaver in the all purple. Schedule for 10 and you might expect the pace to pick, it up, pick up here just a little bit. Well, Sam, let me tell you that uh, yesterday uh, I met Ruddick and he asked me why should I do it before he's out of my advice. And I told him he needs a lot of speed and he's doing it. He's using a lot of speed. You know, Weaver have been fighting a little longer and the Razor is using a lot of speed which I think will be do a good job if he keeps moving. Ruddick is coming off three very impressive victories. Three knockouts by a total of nine rounds. And so obviously he is very much on the upside of his career at this moment. Weaver, on the other hand, did knock out Carl the Truth Williams, but in his last bout was KO'd in the first round by the Bone Crusher. And so uh, it's Mike Weaver trying to put his act back together here. And he knows what it takes to get to the top because he has been there. Sam, I think if Razor put a little pressure on it, that, that I hope in the, in the further round, he put a little pressure on the fight. That way, he feels the situation, and I hope he does. He looks very tentative here, uh, Alexis, as if he's a little bit leery, as he, well, he might be of Weaver's knockout capability. You know, but the thing is, you have to understand, Sam, that uh, Weaver have been fighting longer. He just come in to, for his Razor, he's just starting fighting with the well-known fighters with a big name like Weaver. And that's uh, something that everybody, every kid will be having in his mind with his fighting. It's like a concern, a little bit of concern. Do you imagine there were a few butterflies in the stomach of Ruddick before he stepped into the ring tonight? Oh, I used to have him for any fight, but that the most important thing is that uh, after a first punch go by your face, the nerves disappear. That was a good, beautiful movement out of uh, uh, Razor. Exactly a minute to go in the second round. Still looking for our first definitive punch of the fight. Weaver, who holds his hands fairly high with a good overhand right. Experienced fighters like Weaver will use the first couple of rounds, Alexis, as you know perhaps better than anybody, to size up their opponent, to measure the distance necessary to land the punches that they plan on landing during the course of the fight. But I think that Weaver is, is, is going to start putting pressure because he knows if he starts pressure on the racer, he might get afraid, he might get scared, you know what I mean? Probably. You know? But uh, he's doing the right thing. Weaver is doing the right thing, putting pressure. That way he will psychologically will be given problems to Razor. Approaching the 10 second mark. This is round number two. Razor Ruddick, 22 years old, against the seasoned veteran Mike Weaver. And we are at the end of two rounds here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. So here we go. Welcome back to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Razor Ruddick, 22 years old, now starting to uh, quicken the pace just a little bit, getting on his toes against Mike Weaver and takes a good right hand from Weaver. Ruddick has an incredibly good body, although Weaver is no slouch himself as you look at these great physical specimens. Right now, Weaver connect a good body shot to, to Razor. Of course, George Chavalo himself, the manager of Razor Ruddick, is from Canada. 
And uh, while Razor Ruddick was born in Jamaica, he has spent the last 11 years of his life in Toronto. And over the past year or so, Shivalo has handled him, and handled him very well, in fact. Shivalo, who was a very game uh, heavyweight contender for years, uh, very well respected as a, as a manager in this fight game. And he's got himself a real plum here in Razor Ruddick, and he's got him pointed in the right direction. And this obviously is the biggest hurdle in that young man's career. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's young. And uh, I didn't know that he was number two, ranked number two in, in Canada. And uh, I heard that uh, the week, which is the champion, he had been trying to avoid fighting with him. Well, you know, Alexis, as you, as you prepare for a fight, as you and I have done now a few times, you get a lot of information from each fighter and from the manager. And, uh, you know, there's no way to verify some of it that we get, but we are told by some sources that when, uh, as you look at Chevalo, <laughs> a svelte George Chevalo, who has put on maybe 50 or 60 pounds since his fighting days, but that's all right. But as I was saying, you know, we got the information that Ruddick went out and uh, sparred with Larry Holmes before Holmes' second encounter with Michael Spinks, and we're told that he did extremely well. So much so that uh, Larry didn't want anything to do with him. So, you know, you pick that information up for whatever it's worth. I believe so, because really he is a fast person. He's a fast heavyweight, and he have good speed. One minute to go now in uh, round number three, scheduled for 10. Ruddick in the gold trunks and the former WBA heavyweight champion Michael Weaver in the purple. A very gifted fighter. And he has been the mystery of uh, perhaps the past five or six years in this heavyweight division. There are some people who believe that he probably shouldn't have lost any of the fights that he lost, but he's fought some very, very quality fighters. Michael Dokes, when Dokes was a quality fighter, lost to him. Lost to Pinkland Thomas, but on the other hand, he has beaten a bevy of excellent heavyweight fighters. He's beaten Jerry Cotsia, James Quick Tillis, Carl The Truth Williams, and of course won the WBA title in 1980 when he knocked out John Tate with a shocking 15th round blow that some people are still feeling. Uh, Sam, no, me, me, I was expecting the, the him to win in last round. Five seconds to go. And uh, we'll alert our local stations. We're coming your way. For Razor Ruddick, again coming out. And he has been up a good 10 or 15 seconds before the bell sounded to start each round, working his way uh, toward the uh, midpoint of the ring here. Weaver has taken every possible second that is available to him. And a great left hook by Weaver. And Ruddick is in trouble. A bombing left hook by Weaver. And Ruddick's knees buckled. And they're right over our Bud Sports microphone here. And Ruddick is in very, very serious trouble. I doubt he's ever been hit that hard. Now, I told Ruddick, you. I told you, Sam. It Weaver. doesn't take Weaver very long, Alexis. Weaver is still having his punching power. Ruddick very gamely fighting back along the road, but his knees buckled. This will, will tell us what kind of condition is the racer because when you get a hit in the chin with that kind of punch, you have to show what kind of condition you are. If you're in good condition, you get out of the put out, out of the problem. If you don't, you're in big trouble. Weaver snaps that hook out of nowhere, Alexis. It's like he brings it from right field. Sam, he used to do that. Remember Tate? <laughs> I'll never forget that fight. We like to surprise people. Weaver is allowing Ruddick now to clear his head. And the youngster's doing a very good job of staying his distance, getting back on his toes, and he may have survived this little crisis. What he did, he did a good thing when he got a hit, he got that left shot. Uh, he brought uh, Weaver, which is a good, good measure for a fighter that has not been hurt. This is round number four. We are scheduled for 10, under a minute and a half to go in the fourth round. Weaver, very methodical. He goes about his act here in very workmanlike manner. Oh, Ruddick with a good combination. That's what Ruddick need, I think, Sam, because I think he needs to pressure a little bit in order to, I mean, because I always knew that the, 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 the offense is the best defense. We'll alert our local stations. We'll be coming your way here between rounds four and five, so stand by. And when we come back, of course, we'll take another look at that great hook by Weaver that buckled the knees of... Donovan Razor Ruddick. Actually, his real name is Donovan Ruddick. He got his nickname from, uh, obviously, the very sharp left jab that he has that cuts like a razor. 
And then keep in mind, the young man you're looking at in the gold trunks has only been fighting for six years. And he is on the threshold of something very, very big. 15 seconds to go, round number four, headed for 10. We may not get there, but we're looking that way anyway, Alexis. Robert, I hope he's over, over the, the problem now. We'll be back after this word from your local stations. Hang with us. Sam Nover and Alexis Arguello back in Fayetteville. Let's look at this uh, great left hook. What does it do to a fighter to get staggered like that so early on? Well, if two things could happen. If you are in good condition, you can recover fast. Or your, your nervousism goes away, and then you become a relaxed fighter. You start doing things because you are more worried because if you get heat again, it will be a lot of trouble. You mean that could be turned into something very positive for Ruddick? Yes, I mean, EV is in condition, which it shows that he's in good condition. This is round five. Ruddick turned his back on Weaver for a moment. And it looks like Mike is getting more and more into the fight. Uh, remember that Weaver is notoriously known as a very slow starter. And uh, he usually doesn't get dangerous until somebody hurts him, although Ruddick had not hurt him when Weaver let that... Great left hook go. I can see after uh, Razor got heat with that left hook in his chin. I think he's more loose and more calm. I think he knows that he can take the uh, uh, my Weaver power. Good point. He knows that he can take Weaver's best shot now and he can go about his business. But was that Weaver's best shot? That's the question. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Sam, but you know that his best sh uh, shot, Weaver shot, is a left hook. We all know that that the, was the punch he put, uh, he won the title. Midway through the fifth round, which means we are midway through the scheduled 10 rounder. Or nearly midway through, we will be after five. Ruddick shooting out the left jab. Weaver standing right there and taking it. Weaver looks very, very confident tonight, Alexis. I think the, mis the mistake of Ruddick is that he's leaving his left hand too low. He should have his hand as high as he can as uh, protecting his chin. Exactly a minute to go in the fifth round. Donovan Razor Ruddick, 22 years old, born in Jamaica, spent the last 11 years of his life in Toronto, Canada. And the veteran, Mike Weaver, 34 years old, has about an eight pound weight advantage in this fight. Has 41 professional fights, 128 of them. He was born in Texas, raised in Pomona, California, one of 15 children. Well, he was born hungry, wasn't he? <laughs> Uh, I never met a rich boxer, you know, they, we all come from a, from a poor family and that's the only thing we can do to survive. Always curious to me is the biggest payday in these uh, fighters' careers and you want a discrepancy to measure tonight. The biggest payday was for Weaver was two and a half million when he fought Jerry Cotsia. The biggest payday for Ruddick tonight here in Fayetteville, about $20,000. We'll be back after this. Of course, is only a prelude to our main event tonight. James Bone Crusher Smith, who hails from Fayetteville, North Carolina, against David Bay, a legitimate bona fide contender for the heavyweight championship, and that'll come immediately following this fight. And this starting to develop now, uh, Alexis, into a pretty good fight. Ruddick has taken what appears to be the best that Weaver can throw, and is coming back with some confidence. Yeah, and then, uh, the, almost at the end of the last round, uh, Razor connected a good right hand to Weaver, almost at the end. Sixth round scheduled for 10. Again, Ruddick in the gold trunks and Mike Weaver in the purple, if you've just joined us. We are indoors at this Cumberland County Memorial Arena. And they were rocking and rolling here during the undercard, although there were a lot of local boxers involved. They've been relatively quiet, although there's not been a lot to cheer about. But when James Bonecrusher Smith gets in the ring tonight, this arena is going to roll a little bit, I think. I believe so. Ruddick starting to work the jab now and working clockwise around Weaver. Good uppercut. Very good uppercut. And from his corner came a yell from George Shavano like that is it. Now you got his, uh, you got him lined up. Good left jab again. And now Ruddick trying to keep the left jab right in Weaver's face. Midway through the sixth round. Good snapping left hand by Ruddick. He 
should, uh, you should use that left jab a little more often because it really is using, uh, it takes too long to, to use the jab. It should be able to use it more often. You think it probably is in both of their game plans, Alexis, to just walk through this thing tonight, or at some point here, are we going to see Ruddick pick the pace up a little bit? Well, I think, Rudder, you have to do it. That's what I said from the beginning. You have to do it because, well, he went through a heavy shot that he took from Weaver. I hope that thing give the pace to take the nerve system out of him, and then he can perform, and he can do better. He can get good pressure on the fight. Ruddick got himself out of harm's way on that one. Again, we alert our local stations. We'll be coming your way with a local break here after the sixth round. Razor Ruddick in the gold trunks. Weaver has admitted and did, in fact, admit to me yesterday that he does not have the greatest of work habits. And I think it came perhaps from an amateur career in which he coasted through with a lot of very easy and very early knockouts. And so he really didn't exactly develop what is commonly referred to as a Protestant work ethic. And uh, he has had some problems on occasions, but he thinks he's got his act together now and only time will tell. Under, good ten, right under 10 seconds to go here. We'll return after this message from your local station. We are live at the Cumberland County Memorial Arena. This is Fayetteville, North Carolina, round seven. Scheduled for 10, Mike Weaver in the purple trunks. Donovan Razor Ruddick, born in Jamaica, spent the last 11, 12 years in Toronto, Canada, and managed by the former heavyweight contender, George Shavalo, in the gold trunks. And hanging in there, looking to perhaps get himself going, and hoping that his conditioning can take him through 10 here. Weaver hit him early on with a great left hook and staggered the young man. His knees buckled. He was in deep trouble on the near ropes, but he weathered that storm and has come back to uh, fight a respectable fight. Yeah, uh, Sam, and in the last round, the sixth round, uh, Razor could make a good right hand to Weaver or at the end, almost at the end of the round. Good up right there. Ruddick is being warned here about holding behind the head and hitting, I believe. That's the second time. He did it in round number two. Now he's starting to jab a little bit more. And as Alexis has said all night, uh, the thing that he's got going for him is a great jab, but he doesn't use it often enough, and it's quite obvious. Well, I hope Chubala will be able to tell him to use more of the jab. Uh, like I told him, you know, that's his best weapon. Ruddick's record is 12-1-1. As I mentioned at the outset, he has seven knockouts. He's not considered a knockout puncher. He has only lost to David Jacko. He contends that uh, he had an exercise-induced asthma attack and could not breathe in the ninth round. And he ended up losing that fight, but he said had it not been for the asthma problem, which has disappeared, he would still be an uh, undefeated fighter having tied only once, or had a draw once. One minute to go. This is the seventh round. Scheduled for ten. It's the bone crusher James Smith and David Bay to follow. Good jabs. Turned Weaver's head around on that one. He used one and a body, and a body two and a head, which is a good, good, good to, the, to make the Weaver lose the control. Ruddick is a likable young man, and you're drawn to him almost instantly when he talks about his family. He has a two and a half year old child, and he's got a six month old child, and he told me the other day that uh, there is nothing in the world more important to him and that now fighting has a purpose before he fought the fight now he says every single punch he throws has meaning because he's fighting for his family and uh, you're almost drawn to a kid like that uh, immediately yes i know what it's like and you do too to have kids and uh, i think so and i love them and i echo your sentiments my friend under 10 seconds to go in round number seven scheduled for 10 we'll get out of this round all right number eight and I would imagine that uh, this fight has to be fairly even only one damaging blow has been landed that by Mike Weaver how would you have it scored uh, through seven uh, I think it's pretty even with just taking it and count uh, the heavy point that uh, Weaver gave to Razor what uh, on his uh, bicycle now backpedaling trying to get himself in position to start working the left jab again 
that's here. good for women. I'm sorry, Sam, because uh, the judges, uh, when they, some judges, they, when they uh, see a fighter pushing and pushing, that, that that's meaningful to, to the judges. And we were just doing it. Like I said, I don't know why Ray hasn't used his jobs that often, you know. I don't know why. Combination by Ruddick. Where has that been for eight rounds? Now he's coming back. Starting to use the left jab and the uppercut. And of course, if you talk to his manager, George Chavalo, he'll tell you that Ruddick not only has the best left jab in the heavyweight division, he's got the best uppercut as well. <laughs> of course, he doesn't think that Ruddick has any deficiencies whatsoever. I said, George, tell me everything I want to know about Ruddick. He says, what do you need to know? He's got a superb jab, excellent speed. He counters well. He can take a punch. He's got foot speed. He's got no weaknesses. <laughs> no, but, I mean, I think he needs a little bit more of a... Uh, seasoning. Seasoning. Well, he's, he's still a young man. He's still he's just, he's just starting at 12, you know. And I think, I hope he'll do good. He looks like he's a nice, uh, nice fellow. We have about one minute left in round number eight, and we'll alert our local stations again. We'll uh, be uh, breaking locally here in between the eighth and ninth rounds. So stand by. Ruddick just took a peek in the audience and uh, got a message here from your former manager, Bill Miller, who's seated behind us and nodded. I think he gave him some kind of signal. Everybody's an expert in the fight game, huh? <laughs> well, I can say that I mean, Bill Miller could be a new expert. I've been in boxing for a long time. And he has spent with me about 11 years only, you know, and I, I like him as a great man. Giving you a few tips along the line, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Under 30 seconds to go. The eighth round has been, again, rather eventful, as have many of the rounds of this fight. And we did expect a greater uh, uh, aggressiveness on the part of Ruzik, Ruddick, rather, and certainly more jabs, but he has been a little bit reluctant. Weaver has landed the only solid punch of the fight. Ten seconds to go to our local break. The end of round eight. We'll be back to the Fayetteville, North Carolina arena right after this. Let's go back to round eight and look at this flurry by Ruddick, Alexis. And that's the kind of sequence that it should put together. The speed and a lot of more jab. Good hand speed. Round number nine. We are nearing the end now. If anything's going to happen, it's going to have to happen soon. they got less than six minutes of fighting remaining. Ruddick has proven... Uh, if nothing else, that he can take a punch in a very solid one from Weaver, but he has done very little on his own aggressively to pile up any points. Now, whether or not the judges think that because he's the only one jabbing or seemingly the only one jabbing, that he is the aggressor remains to be seen. But he has not done much offensively. I think he's missing the killer instinct that everybody talks about. Although I think we must give... Weaver a little bit of credit, too. Weaver has not exactly left himself wide open for much. He is a very crafty veteran. I hate to use a trite expression, but he is. He's been around for a long time, 34 years old. And uh, if he is fighting a rookie, he is going to make it his point to stay out of harm's way if possible. Besides, the, the, his experience, you can see it because uh, Weaver, all the time, he uses his hands uh, protecting his jaw. And the razor, he's like uh, doing a Muhammad Ali style, you know. Weaver's fighting at 223 and change tonight, and he does feel that the best shape he's ever been in was when he fought back in 80 and 81 at about 210 or 212. But he said he's getting older now, and it's a lot more difficult for him to keep the weight off, although he looks in immaculate shape. But he's fighting at 223, and he's fought to, he's obviously fought fairly well at that weight on occasion. We're approaching the two-minute mark in the ninth round. Scheduled for 10. Donovan Razor Ruddick in the gold. Michael Weaver in purple, and it's been a relatively even fight. Although, if you put a gun to my head and ask me who's won it so far, I'd say Weaver. It's a good left hook for, from Weaver to, to Razor. Pace has not deviated much at all, Alexis, from the opening bell right through round number nine. But he has been a lot of the good, good things that Razor have done. A lot of good combination, but he, I don't know why he doesn't, he doesn't do it at all. Well, maybe we'll get a chance to talk to him after the fight. 
and to find out why he didn't push uh, Weaver a little bit harder. Because every fighter can, can come to the ring to fight, to do their job, but I don't know what he's waiting for. We will stay here between uh, rounds 9 and 10 and see if we can't pick up the final instructions from their handlers for Ruddick and Weaver. A grazing left hand by Ruddick. Now Weaver jabbing for one of the few times tonight. Five seconds to go in the round. He dug a good left hook and a left uppercut in at the bell. Let's go back with Razor Ruddick now. Follow him back to his corner and see if we can't pick up some of the instructions from George Shavala. Shimano says if they win the round, they win the fight. I don't know about that. Let's jump across the ring now to Mike Weaver and see what he's listening to. Get right on top of him, man. I'm telling you, he's going to get up on you got to keep him backing up. Even if you can't hit him with no shot, just keep him backing up. Keep him running. Let's take a look at a, a Michael Weaver left hook here from round number nine. He got Ruddick uh, falling backward. I don't think that did much damage, did it? No, and he had his gloves. He, his glove was protecting his chin. So here we are. We've arrived at round number uh, 10, rather, at about the same pace that we started the entire fight. This is it, and I would imagine both fighters now will go all out in the final three minutes. Alexis. I think uh, the, la the last round, the ninth round, Ray Razor fought, and then in the end, he fought excellent. That's the way he should keep fighting this day round, last round. Well, let's see if... Ruddick can fight in round 10 the way he ended round number nine. Shavalo thinks if he wins the 10th round, he can win the fight. Let's see. I don't think so. I have my doubts as well. But stranger things have happened. Certainly, Weaver has not been dominant. There's, there's no way that anybody has controlled this fight, and it's pretty much a toss-up. But he has put uh, the strongest punches together. That's what I believe. So, well, like I would say, we are not the judge. And let's see what... The judges uh, score. Two minutes to go in this tenth round. Five unanswered punches from Ruddick. There are two more. Make it seven. Now Weaver starting to take to the attack a little bit. Luis Rivera will have nothing to say about the winner of this fight if it goes a distance because the referee does not have a vote. We will have the vote of three judges on a 10-point must system. A minute and a half to go in the round. this fight and, and if you're really honest about it weaver has done very little else but the one left hook that shook ruddick up other than that he hasn't done much himself but at least the people in the jersey saw that he's we he want to fight because the one that has been backing up is racer and i mean if he's uh, he's looking forward to fight a title to get a title shot he should be able to put pressure on the fight good exchange in the far corner both fighters landing blows. About 30 seconds to go in the fight. So in 20 seconds, Donovan Razor Ruddick will have fought the biggest fight of his young career. Whether he wins it remains to be seen, but obviously he'll come away from this experience uh, much the wiser regardless of whether he wins it or loses it. We are at the end. It goes the distance. Razor Ruddick and Michael Weaver. <laughs> kind of uh, mixed reactions here, Alexis. Uh, there's some booing in the audience. I think some of the folks here expected a little bit more. Well, we'll be back with the decision of this 10-rounder, the heavyweight fight between Weaver and Ruddick after we take this break. We'll be right back. 
back at the Cumberland County Memorial Arena here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. They are collecting the ballots now, the three judges, and uh, while we wait for that decision, we might look back at the fight. Alexis, your reflections on it, and of course there's one punch that stands out, and whether it's enough to put Weaver over the top remains to be seen, but it was a, a wicked left hook that landed. Yes, and it was a strong punch, and, uh, you know, uh, and he showed me that he was in great condition, Racer, because he's, he really, uh, you're going to see the punch. It was a strong punch, and, uh, you know, thank God that Razor took the punch and came out of alive because it, it, right now he's doing a great thing that that's the, the, the way every boxer that get hurt should react okay we have a decision now let's go up in the ring and our ring announcer Denny McGuire <laughs> ladies and gentlemen Judge George to Gabriel scores it 96 94 Weaver <laughs> Judge Harold Letterman scores it 98 92 Ruddick to me, Alexis Arguello, how three men can sit at different parts of the ring and see a fight so dramatically different. The winner on a split decision is Donovan Razor Ruddick, the biggest day in his life. And while Ruddick celebrates in the ring, back in the, uh, in one little quiet corner of this arena is David Bay awaiting his big opportunity against James Bone Crusher Smith pacing like a caged lion he is next coming up but the winner of this one on a split decision is donovan razor ruddick in a split decision over michael weaver we'll be back after this word from your local stations This is Arguello. This is Sam Nover. Back here we are at ringside at the Cumberland County Memorial Arena, and we have with us uh, Razor Ruddick, a very happy victor, along with Alexis, of course. And uh, this has been a, um, a great evening for you, young man. Step right in here. We'll get a camera right in your face so everybody around the country can take a good look at you. Uh, Alexis was saying during the fight why you didn't use your combinations more frequently and why you didn't jab more often. Can you answer that? All right. For instance, um, this is my big shot. I didn't want to take any chances. And I went in there and I, I did my best. And I did my job. So I didn't want to take it. He, get me, he got me with a good shot in one of the rounds. I don't remember when. But I, I move around and I recuperate. But I didn't want to take any chances too much. Yeah, to say and the least. very de devastation with his hook. To say the least, he got you with a good shot. The, yeah, left, the left hook buckled your knees and you held yeah. on for dear life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's what fighting all about. You know? Yeah. Listen, you did a good thing when he when he hit you with a left hook, yeah. and you grab it. You did a good job. The only thing I, I need for you to keep doing it yeah. is to make sure that when you jump in the ring, yeah. you're ready to fight yeah. because you're a fighter. Yeah. I mean, if you put pressure, a little more pressure to Weaver, yeah. you would have done better. That's yeah. my opinion. Well, I, I, I'm really I'm really happy with my um, performance tonight. I'm very happy with my performance because Weaver is a very known opponent. He's um, our next, I mean, ex world champion, and he's very devastating with his left hook. And I'm very glad of my performance. Let me get your manager, George Chavallo, in here. George, step in here for just a moment, if you would. Uh, did, he, did he fight your game plan, or were you a little bit disappointed at times? Well, I mean, he, it's a learning experience. It was a learning and winning experience all at the same time. And that's extremely valuable. He fought a former champion of the world. He was cool on the bar. Got hit with a hell of a hook in the second or third round. Recovered, fought back, and fought with a lot of composure for a kid who only had 14 fights going into this fight. What's next for the young man? Can you tell me? Well, first of all, I'd like to clear up the Canadian situation with Willie DeWitt. They don't want to fight us. We'd like to get that straight out first. And after that, it's anybody else, it's anybody in the top 10. And after that, we're hopefully going for a world title. Okay, George, take a look at it. We've got the replay. Razor has gone off to the dressing room here, but let's take a look at this. Uh, you had to be concerned. You had to wonder if he was going to come out of this one already. Right. Well, the kid takes a good punch. He's got a lot of moxie. He knew he had presence of mind to hold on, 
and he, he's just stuck it out and weathered the storm. That's the mark of a good fighter. He got hurt, he held on, he held his hands up, and didn't get hit again with a solid shot throughout the fight. Well, despite the fact you put on a few pounds, you look terrific, my friend. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, <laughs> All right, George. George Chivato, the manager of the uh, winner of this first fight. We have two, uh, obviously, big 10-rounders scheduled for you. One is history. Razor <laughs> Chivato's kissing everybody in sight. Razor Ruddick has won a split decision over Michael Weaver. We'll break now for your local stations and be back with our main event right after this.